get it, get it, Bernard. Did you get it? Get it, get it. Get it, get it. Get it, Bernard. Get it, Bernard. Get it. You got it. Good boy. Good boy. And gone. What's up, guys? I'm back. Daniel here, Woodland Acres. So you got sort of a dilemma here that we're dealing with. Uh, long story short, uh, I might have jinxed myself with Betty and Bernard. Lately, I've been um, talking about how the dogs have not been getting out any, anymore, not been going after the coyotes, and uh, they've been respecting their, we've been retraining them, and they've been uh, respecting their, their collar. Well, I don't think that's happening anymore. Uh, recently, we've had uh, to deal with them getting out of the property again, and it's because, most likely because of those coyotes. I have evidence, I'll try to post a video here where uh, we had some coyote action. We, we didn't see the coyotes, but they were just over the train tracks where we know the coyote dens are at. And they were making a lot of sounds, a lot of noises, and I don't know if they're doing it intentionally to call our dogs or if it's because it's coyote season or birthing season or mating season. So the tracks are right there. You can see the railroad tracks right over the tracks. Those are the coyotes. And clearly, I would say they're probably taunting Betty and Bernard. There's, there's Betty, there's Bernard. And they're not going, they're not crossing because they're right by the perimeter where, the, where they would otherwise hear the, the collar go off. Uh, it's almost been daily now for the past, uh, I'd say almost a week, uh, the dogs have been getting out. Usually at night, they'll come back. It's not an issue of them not coming back, but for safety reasons, um, now having to put in some temporary fencing. So ran over to uh, Tractor Supply, grabbed some uh, welded wire fencing. I'm gonna see if it works. Gonna try to do a little work with uh, the hot wire fence and wrap it around. And I'm going to see if I can keep the dogs contained in the back part of our property. There's already existing fencing there with some hot wire. We normally don't let the dogs go back there. Um, just because the coyote, there's coyote presence that comes back there. But now I'm going to switch my strategy up, see if we can keep the dogs contained in the fenced area with hot wire fencing. And uh, we're no longer going to allow them to come up to the front part of the property unless it's during the day. So um, we'll see how it works. Uh, might have jinxed myself once again with all of this talk of them um, respecting their e-collar but maybe when this coyote season passes it'll, it'll be okay but I just don't want to risk them getting out anymore so off to work because of you two Bernard, Betty I've got to now go and fix this fence so most of this fence is still okay, um, but along this side, this area of the fence, previously when the cows that were back here, they uh, basically just trampled all over this fence and knocked it down. Originally I was just gonna cut this and pull it out, but it looks like I can actually just stretch it up all the way. It's not gonna be the cleanest or prettiest, but uh, rather than have to put in um, this is probably 100 feet plus uh, fencing. I'm going to use what I have here, pull it back up, resecure it to the T post. The T posts are fine, and then I'm going to run probably, probably two or three strands of hot wire along here, um, and we'll see if that uh, see if that keeps Bernard at bay. I don't know. I'm, I think I'm being hopeful here. Um, I'm, I'm pretty convinced if there's a will, there's a way with these guys. And uh, But if it's gonna be enough to uh, uh, keep them in, then I'll give it a shot, so. So they actually, believe it or not, uh, this morning, they just got back again. That's why I'm doing this fencing, because they were out 
all night after the coyotes or something. So here it is folks, they sleep during the day and they're going out at night, kind of like teenagers.